Thank you, Andy, for, for joining me. And um, we've got a few questions to, to go through today. So thanks for finding the time. Uh, I'll start with um, 2020 has been a challenging year for everyone, uh, not least of all for me, because I spent six months of it with my parents. Um, I suppose we've been really lucky that the European tour has actually been able to continue. How have you found it? Uh, you know what? I think I've won the few that's probably um, come out of it better off if that sounds um if that sounds silly really you know i've never really spent a sustained period of time at home with the children and the kids it's um it's just nice to have that you know two two three months basically at home with them and spend such a sustained period at home but also for my golf game i um, can't really remember the time i really took two months off uh, playing tournament golf and it gives you you know such a long time to reflect on you know, things that are going right, things are going wrong. And um, my last event was uh, the Qatar Masters. And, um, you know, I made an absolute hash of the weekend. And, I'm, and I've come home and I've sat on that and dwelled on what I did wrong and how I was approaching the game and how I was just striving for, you know, this one outcome of the win. All I wanted to do was win, win, win. But then when I got myself in the position, um, I couldn't get out my own way. Um, and it, it really took me you know, having that time off to realise and reflect of, of what I was doing to myself in them positions and um, you know, I've come back out the other side of it and I feel, you know, totally freer, I can feel like I can just play golf freely, uh, I feel like a better person for it as well, so um, in, in a roundabout way, it took a world pandemic for, realize, for me to realise how much of an idiot I was being on the golf course really, so um, yeah, in a great, I'm quite grateful for the time uh, to spend with my family and, and realise, um, you know, the mistakes I was making on the golf course. Oh, that's great. I think loads of people had time to reflect, actually, and just sort of reassess priorities as well. So that's interesting that it tr translates into sport uh, as well. And so for you, a global pandemic once every few years, just, to, you know, hang out the skills, meet the family again. I'm hoping, you know, the mindset I've got for quite a long time. I'm not going to lie, I was quite happy uh, when the government announced the kids could stay at school. So, uh, you know, this lockdown's a little bit easier with the kids being at school uh, yeah. compared to last time with um, homeschooling. I have a newfound uh, love for teachers and respect for them uh, having to teach them at school because homeschooling, that was, uh, yeah, that's as tough as it gets for me. Yeah, I read a lot of our, a lot of our staff found that as well. And you've been invited to play in the RSM Classic in the US. And what does that mean, that invitation or that achievement mean for you? You know, obviously extremely proud to be an ambassador for RSM and extremely proud to be going into that event representing RSM. And they've always um, always wanted to go and play the RSM Classic, but, you know, it's always clashed with DP World at the end of the year. And it's an event I can't miss um, for my European tour schedule. So... I'm really, you know, chuffed that I've, I've got the opportunity to go over there and experience it and, you know, looking forward to giving myself a good show in and uh, do the RSM team proud. Oh, good luck. Um, so for me, golf was, was literally a saving grace during lockdown because it was one of the first things you could go and do. Uh, it got me out of the house for a good four hours minimum Saturdays and Sundays if I needed it when I was with my parents. So I, 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 I played quite a lot of golf. Um, what did you do? That's your day job. So for me, it was an out there. What did you do initially when actually you couldn't get onto courses? How did you keep healthy physically and mentally in those first few months? Um, yeah, I did a lot of a lot of running um, and listened to a lot of audio books while I was running. It really helped me, like I say, clear my mind and, you know, kept me sort of sane in a way because you know i think that's the first time you know anyone in the uk has really had to be forced to be confined into their own sort of space and it, you know it's not you know, it's not a nice place to be you know you do want to go out and do things you do want to see people you do want to be social and it you know it's difficult when you are in that space and you are trying to you know i can see why people you know get a little bit you know down a little bit depressed sometimes with it because it is difficult so you know i think 
being able to get back on the golf course and like you say have that four hours away where you can just take your mind off somewhere else and you probably you know, take two and a half hours to mine closer to five but <laughs> yeah well but you know you can just go out there free your mind and you know it's easy game to social distance as well so yeah you can go out there and see your friends and talk to them it's just it was nice to have that i think it was a, a welcome relief when golf was uh, back introduced uh, after the lockdown i think it, i think a lot of people you know really i think it created a bit more of a buzz in the golfing scene as well i think it's encouraged people to to get on board with that because they've seen how much of a, a social game it is and mm. you know i know it's a frustrating game at times but you know going out there you, you are really relaxing you enjoy you enjoy the walk and taking in the wildlife i love that sort of stuff so um you know taking all that and i think it you know it creates a you're not so down when you come away from a game of golf, I don't think. And do you think, sort of perversely, again, that, you know, the COVID or the pandemic will help golf improve its image? It's got an image of a bit pale, male, stale, elitist. Um, I, but I, I find it, I'm new to golf and I found it um, very inclusive, um, actually. So I was just, how does, how does it bridge that, that gap? I think, again, I think it, I think, you know the good things that have come out of this that it's you know made golf clubs aware that you know they have you've, you've got to be it's, it's it's an open ball part now you know you've got to be more open and versatile to these things now you can't just you know be a closed shop and and be that you've got to be very diverse and encourage people to come and play golf and if that means you know wearing hoodies on the golf course or, you know with what's going on in the world I don't think wearing hoodies on a golf course is a really big deal right now I think in any no, way right. courage you know, kids or ladies, anyone to come out and play golf. I think it's just good for the game of golf to see how, you know, wonderful game it is. And, you know, I think the best thing about golf is, you know, the friends you make and, you know, through it. I've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of friends all through golf and not necessarily on tour, but just playing in general as a kid. And, you know, I think it, it bonds a great friendship to make golf, you know. And, um, yeah, I think the lockdown's done its good in, you know, it's opened the doors to, to everyone, which it should be. Fantastic. So I was in, I uh, went to the Race of Dubai last year with Edgar, the European Central okay. Golf Association. So uh, I went and walked the course with, uh, they had eight players out in the field uh, from the Disabled Golf Association. Did you, I don't know if you saw them, have you seen any of the Edgar stuff that we're involved with? Yeah, no, of course. Um, I've managed to play a few practice rounds with uh, Brendan Lawler, who's, you know. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie, I played play with them at the Belfry this year in a practice round and uh, if that golf course wasn't wet, that, uh, you know, the lad, can, the lad would have competed with us, no problem. It just got a little bit wet and it was a little bit too long, but on a firm golf course, I have no no doubts in my mind that Brendan can compete with all of us. That's He's, uh, he's a talented, talented boy and it's fantastic to see again. Like I say, if anything's come from it, you know, Golf should be open to everybody. It shouldn't be elitist or anything like that. We should all, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We should all just play golf and that's that's the be all and end all of it, isn't it? And for me, it's fantastic to see and the Edgar side of it, I can't wait to, you know, for the European Tour to really push that and, um, you know, see more more of the Edgars come into play um, at the events we are playing because, you know, <laughs> it's just it's fantastic to see and I think the world needs to see it as well. Yeah, I, I found it humbling when I took up golf and realised I was going to go around with sort of 36 was an aspiration and there are people in wheelchairs it, it is better than me. It, it's incredible, yeah, and you, you can have nothing but admiration for them. Um, it's just, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And honestly, when you, it's just how well they hit the ball, you, you know, and like you said, they're in wheelchairs and some of some of amputees and lost arms and stuff. And they hit the ball just as good as us. It's incredible yeah, to see. I, like I say, if you want to, like, for me, is I've spoke to a few people at my golf club and, like, you know, who's impressive. And I always say, you know, you need to come watch these Edgar guys. It is fantastic because, you know, it is an inspiration as well, you know, that they don't, you know, they don't lie down and just, you know, feel sorry for themselves. They're getting out there and doing it. It's, uh, it's fantastic. And taking you all the way back to where it started, what was your biggest inspiration in your early golfing days? Why did you take up golf in the first place? Uh, well, I took up golf in the first place. My dad got me into it. Um, I owe my dad a lot, and um, in terms of that, getting me into that game, and you know the way, the how he pushed me as I got uh, better and better at it. It was um, 
he's quite clever how he pushed me to be fair but um as i got a little bit older my inspirations grew towards lee westwood to be fair um and um when i was about 16 17 um i got invited along to uh, an english golf coaching event and lee got to play a few holes with us and he you know he said some really really nice things to me about um you know what I was doing and where I should be going and things like that and it really inspired me to, to go on when you hear you know someone of Lee's calibre saying that to you um, you know it's here uh, it really gives you the motivation to go on to feel like you can do what I'm doing now and um, you're still an inspiration to this day. Uh, finally one for my mum so why aren't golfers ever in Strictly Come Dancing? You know as and, much as... And is it one for you Andy? <laughs> You know, we can move a golf club. I'm not sure my feet. I I leave that to uh, to the professionals. I am. Um, I mean, I think I might last a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe a, maybe two weeks. I'll be pushing it. Maybe just a week. Um, yeah, I I can't say. I wouldn't put myself on that pedestal that I am a, a good dancer. And if you ask my fiance, she would definitely tell you that my best move is probably the Running Man, and that's it. You know, just the old. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> that's about as good as it gets and um yeah no i wouldn't i wouldn't i'd rather go and do 20 bush tucker trials than uh than strictly come dancing i'm not gonna lie brilliant <laughs>